Hey guys, welcome back to the old computer shack. We're going to talk about this piece of shit here in a little bit, but um, first of all, I want to apologize for these grid lines. Um, I'm actually recording this introduction after I recorded the rest of it, and uh, I didn't realize that the power failed, and my camera turns these back on every time the power fails because the battery and it's like completely shot. The thing's like 15 years old. It's it's like one of the very first Sony Handy cams. Um, and I also want to apologize for my filthy, filthy fingers. I haven't been home yet. I was working on some fence up here near the old computer shack, so I figured I'd just come in here at the end of the day and film this stuff before I went back to the house and I'd save myself a trip going back and forth. So you'll have to deal with filthy fingers. All right, let's do it. Please forgive <coughs> my shitty snorting and sniffling. I'm recovering from what I assume is the flu, although perhaps I caught the coof again. Who the hell knows? One and the same, really. Oh, did I say that out loud on YouTube? Pardon me. Um, anyway, uh, today, let's take a look at this um, beautiful, uh, pure Chinesium, uh, Yuking Reliable Electric Company. Pure sine wave inverter, 3 kilowatts. This thing uh, is the infamous reliable inverter from eBay that um, everybody is buying for super cheap money and then blowing up uh, when they try to hook it to their house. So um, I needed a new cheap inverter, uh, so I figured why not get this thing and fix it so it doesn't blow up when we try to hook it to the to the old computer shack. So let's. Um, Let's 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 examine it and see what the problem might be, shall we? So okay. First of all, these things have a reputation for not actually um, being able to supply three kilowatts. Um, some people claim that they can only get about half that. Other people claim that they can actually get three kilowatts out of them. My supposition is that it's all about. Uh, the supply wiring that you use because it comes with this shitty doubled up uh, fairly small wire um, and if there is enough voltage drop across this wire uh, that the voltage drops below the critical threshold that shuts the thing down uh, when it tries to draw more amperage than the shitty supply wires can supply um, then that would be what would keep you from getting your whole three kilowatts out of it I don't know We'll make some better, um, some better cabling for this thing sometime. But for our purposes, just testing it, I think that will be sufficient. But let's 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 set it up here where you can see it, shall we? Shall shall we? Uh, if if we can get it to stand up, there we go. Okay, so here we have. Um, this is a, an input voltage display. That's an output voltage display. We've got a couple of receptacles, and we've got this uh, this terminal block for hooking it to your to your RV or to your house or whatever. And um, the way these uh, pretty multicolored terminal blocks are supposed to uh, supposed to work is the outside two. Um, well, the red one is supposed to be your hot, the black one's supposed to be your neutral, and the yellow one is supposed to be your ground. All right. Don't ask me why they came up with those color codes, but we're going to see that this is indeed not the case on this and probably on many other cheap ass inverters. And we will explore why they, they blow up when you hook them to your house. So, uh, that's kind of shitty right there how the voltage builds, the output voltage builds up um, instead of, you know, coming on suddenly. That that kind of sucks, but I guess as long as we don't power up our equipment until that the voltage reaches what it's supposed to, um, we'll be fine. Let's uh, let's measure our our output here on this receptacle. If I can do it without blowing something up. Oh, it would help if I switched it to volts AC instead of volts DC, wouldn't it? That would be good. All right, so there you can see we've got. As it says, 123 volts AC. Happy day. Now let's measure between um, the hot, or let's let's measure between the hot and the ground, shall we? What what is this? 60 volts 
AC between the hot and the ground. Let's try from the neutral to the ground. What? 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 Oh, I don't, I'm not making a good connection. What? 60 volts between neutral and ground? What's going on here? Maybe something's just miswired in there. We better check the terminal block and make sure. It, it'll be fine, right? There's our 120 volts across the supposed neutral and the hot on the terminal block. But let's measure between the ground and the hot again. Oh look, 60 volts again, right? And between the neutral and the, and the ground again. Oh look, 60 volts again. What the fuck? Well, um, my supposition is that, um, see, in a... <coughs> hang on a sec. I love having the flu. <coughs> Alright, sorry about that. I had to have a coughing fit there. Um, I think what I was saying is my supposition is that, um, see, in, um, with a domestic electrical service in the United States, your 120 volt, uh, that you, line voltage that you generally run all of your shit in your house off of is actually half of a, um, center taps 240 volt single phase service, right? So, um, you've got, uh, let's draw a picture. Pictures are good. So you've got your, your, your juice coming in from the power line, right? And it may be like one and a half kilovolts or something. It all depends on, on how far you are from the nearest electrical substation. They supply the electricity over the poles with steel cable, and steel's not the greatest conductor. There's a lot of loss due to heat, so they, they step it up to a really high voltage. Uh, so that the, so that they can uh, they don't have to use like great big cables you know the, the amperage can be lower with a great big higher voltage um, to deliver it to your house and there's some loss in the cable on the way to your house and then when it gets to your house they put one of those uh, transformers up on the pole that looks like a five gallon bucket right and uh, it takes your um, like 1.5 kilovolts or something off of the line all right. And um, gives you a center tapped 240 volt uh, output here. So if we measure between uh, the center tap on either of the two uh, the two sides here, we'll we'll get 120 volts, right? Uh, but these two these two 120 volt sides will be 180 degrees out of phase, right? Um, when the, when this uh, when this waveform up here looks like this, this one down here will look like this, right? Um, anyway, so this goes into your house. Blah, 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 blah. This goes down into your house, right? Into your panel box, all right? And in your panel box. It hooks to the two the two hot sides hook to the main lugs in your panel box, and this 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 neutral goes to a ground bus bar that comes down the side of your panel box. All right, and off the bottom of that bus bar, there's a ground wire that comes out and is actually grounded, like to a ground rod um, near your service entrance. Right, and uh, then you stick a breaker on here. All right somewhere and it draws 120 volts off of one of these um, one of these bus bars here all right and your your Romex the, the hot side connects you know to your breaker and goes out to your circuit and then a neutral hooks to this uh, this this ground slash neutral bus bar and that goes to the rest of your house and powers your your light bulbs or whatever right? Clear as mud. You probably can't see the fucking paper, can you? Uh, oh, there you go. Now it's all clear as mud, right? Voila. Right? So, um, my supposition is that in these cheap inverters, um, they, they're, um, they're driving each side um, of the output 100, uh, 180 degrees out of phase um, so that they can use components that are only rated to 60 volts to save money instead of driving one side all the way to 120 volts and holding the other side at neutral where it's supposed to be and that generally works fine when you're just plugging shit 
into their receptacles because this is all isolated. Um, well, the, the case, the case is grounded. I assume the case is grounded to that so-called neutral. Let's let's check it and see. That's the. Yeah. Okay. So the metal enclosure is attached to this so-called ground in the middle here, right? Um, but uh, as long as I don't touch the case, um, this, this 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 frame here is plastic. But as long as I don't uh, as long as I don't touch the case here and and attach myself to that so-called ground, the two the the two hot sides of this should be completely isolated. I ought to be able to touch those. Yeah. See, I, I don't shock myself on that uh, 60 volts AC when I touch these because it's isolated. Now if I touched both of them at the same time I'm sure it would zap me or if I had touched the so-called ground the neutral whatever and one of the other sides at the same time I'm sure I would get shocked. So I'm not going to try that. But in, in any case this works okay. I mean it's not ideal but this works okay when you're just plugging shit into these receptacles, right? Um, you know, you plug your power drill into this thing, and maybe the metal enclosure is 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 attached to the ground, right? Uh, but that's fine because the neutral isn't bonded to the ground inside of your power tools, and it just magically works. Um, now, if you did touch the neutral while you were holding, you could still shock yourself. It's not ideal, like I said. But the problem comes when you try to hook one of these things into your electrical panel box, because as we discussed before. Uh, when your service, when your when your um, service gets terminated here at your panel box, the uh, the neutral from the transformer outside and the ground, the ground rod outside of your house are bonded together on this bus bar. So when you hook this thing, when you hook this inverter up to your panel box like this, you're essentially shorting one side to the ground through the panel box in your house and that blows up one side of the inverter and that's why people are blowing these things up when they try to hook them to their houses. Now I think that this was kind of a shitty way to design this to begin with but I guess it works okay for like RVs and shit like that because it's isolated um, from the ground anyway, right? Uh, but what I propose is that we unbond the case from the so-called neutral on this bus bar, and in fact, perhaps we should just disconnect this so-called neutral altogether. Um, unbond the case from that. Attach the case to our regular ground for safety reasons, and then, since this is isolated, we can use one of these as the neutral, um, and the other one as the hot. And it, it, for all intents and purposes, it'll act like. 120 volt single phase power. You know what I'm saying? So let's take it apart and see, shall we? Nothing like breaking the warranty seal on day zero, is there? Thing probably doesn't even have a warranty. Well, look at this excitement in here. I think this is the one that we want to disconnect right here. Not a hundred percent sure. Well, no big explosion. Let's see, uh, see if the case is still well maybe we got the wrong thing oh yeah the case is still tied to tied to the ground some way let's look around some more I'm going to take out these screws that go into these heat sinks one at a time and see if doing so actually unbonds the thing from the case ever. Because it's possible that only one of these does it. But I think that's probably unlikely. Okay, so no surprise there. I don't think there's any way 
to unground the chassis or un not ground the chassis on this thing that's rather frustrating so that's it I guess um, I was hoping we'd uh, we'd be able to fix this right but um, the powers that be have conspired against us I suppose uh, in summary I think um, you got two options if you get one of these things. Um, either don't hook it to your household electrical system. Um, if you're going to use it in like an RV or something, um, some some place where your ground and neutral aren't bonded inside of the vehicle and you've got a full transfer switch that switches the neutrals. Uh, also, uh, when you switch between your like house battery and like um, shore power or whatever they call it you'll probably be fine and won't blow the thing up. Um, or if you do have to hook it up to your household electrical system, um, where the neutral and the ground are bonded inside of your at your service entrance, um, then uh, I think that the, uh, the only realistically safe way to do that, um, like I say, since, since the output is electrically isolated uh, from the input, um, you can hook one side of this to the neutral um, as long as you don't touch the uh, the so-called ground on this uh, output terminal here um, you can hook either side of this really uh, to um, to the so-called neutral and it'll put that that side at ground potential all the time and the other side will be 120 volts AC like your equipment expects um, and for all intents and purposes it'll be correct you know what I'm saying the problem is that there's no way to unbond this metal chassis from that um, 60 volt AC center tap which is what that'll turn into if you attach one of the far these far sides to uh, to the neutral right so if anything conductive touches this chassis and the chassis of anything else that is actually grounded it'll blow up your inverter. So I think that the only safe way to hook this to your household electrical system is to put it inside of another box um, that it's electrically isolated from um, to, to make sure that nothing can ever touch this case, right? Uh, some wooden cabinet with only this in it that was always shut um, would probably be sufficient and then you could just run these out to another terminal block or something like that um, but uh, yeah it's it's not ideal but you know when you're paying like a quarter of the price for a three kilowatt inverter that you would otherwise assuming the thing will even get three kilowatts I will test that later sometime when I make some better cables um, you know, you got to work with what you got, I guess. All right. That's it. Thanks for joining me. See you later.